recording is going to be a little bit different for this. I'm going to start posting the lectures on my YouTube and linking from there. So because uh, the Zoom recording, they're limiting the amount of time the recordings can stay. All right. So let's get started. Still missing a couple. But uh, hopefully they can catch up or they can review the recording. So welcome to week 10. Um, as I said, we have a lot to cover. So hang on to your hats or whatever they call it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the midterm. Uh, and basically, I will, I'm going to review the test itself a little bit, um, maybe go over a couple of the questions so you can kind of see. Uh, but I want to give everyone that has not um, downloaded and taken the little respondents lockdown test uh, to do that now. We're going to take a couple minutes, make sure you go out to, let me, uh, Stop sharing here, just to show you. I know most of you on here now have done this, but um, just to make sure everyone is aware that you have to do this before you take the midterm. All right. So in Canvas, um, in the midterm section, which is right after section nine or 10, excuse me. There's this test respond, respondus lockdown browser section. Okay, Lam, I think you were on my list. So you just need to open that up, download. There's a special download for you. Uh, do not Google it because you will not get the correct, correct version. Uh, just click on introductions for the lockdown browser. Make sure you do it from there. It's a special one associated with MCC uh, that you have to run. So those of you that haven't, that are that are on uh, in class today, make sure you do that now because you have to go through that, that lockdown browser testing before midnight tonight. So I, I would like for you all to do that now. I didn't even spell it right. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's go back to our little lecture material. Uh, wait, wait one second. I have to spell respond, respond this correctly. Okay, there we go. All right. Share screen. So yes. Make sure that that's done by tonight. It's it, it's three points. I generally just give every if everyone does it. I generally just just give you the points, um, so it doesn't in, in affect your grade. But it's important that you have that ready on your computer because if it if you try to get into the midterm and it does not find res the respondent's browser, you will not be able to take the midterm, and that will impact your grade. So. Please, please, please do that. All right, so the midterm study guide, I'm gonna go over that here in a second, uh, just, just briefly. And um, I'm going to just review kind of high level the midterm itself. So you, you all don't panic, there's no panic. And so the midterm will open tomorrow morning at eight. 8 a.m. Arizona time, uh, and will remain open until Friday, October 25th at midnight. Now, that doesn't mean you can open it and close it and go back, and you can't do any of that. Once, you op once you've opened the midterm, you have 90 minutes to complete it. So you can take your time, download the midterm study guide, make yourself extra notes, run some queries, whatever you need to do uh, before you open it. Uh, 
the lockdown browser will not allow you to navigate outside of the midterm um, to any other sites or, or study guides. Um, but let's see. It's just, it is browser-based. So if you want to open up the, although if you navigate away from the test, it will it will lock you out. Um, so uh, I haven't, I, I don't think anyone's tried to navigate from the test and go into the developer. Um, yeah, that would be helpful, but I don't think you can do that with this lockdown browser. Basically it is tied to the browser itself. And if you, even if you minimize it or, or, you know, but well, any change any change in the browser will cause it to lock down. So be be aware of that. So once again, the midterm itself will open tomorrow morning at eight Arizona time and close Friday at midnight. All right. And I'm gonna go into that right after I highlight the rest of the schedule. So please bear with me. All right. The other items we'll be covering tonight, we're gonna go into section 10. And I do want to remind you that Section 10 is not a part of the midterm. Uh, we're right away moving into the next part of, part of our uh, course. So Section 10, oh, before I go into Section 10, I do want to highlight that one question um, in the Section 9 assignment where basically it required a subquery to get the question right. But I did uh, give everyone credit for it. Uh, and we're just going to review that right quick. And then into subqueries, fundamentals, single row subqueries, multiple multi, multiple row subqueries, correlated subqueries are our are, are topics in this section in our practice, our assignment and quiz. All right. So without further ado, before I get to subqueries, the first thing that I want to do, and I'm going to switch computers. So... Don't feel like I'm leaving. Here, here I am. So can y'all still hear me okay? Yep. Yes. All right. So as I said, I wanted to take a look at that one question and we're, I'm just gonna walk through the solution. I, I will get there in a second uh, when I share my screen, so. All right. Can you all see my canvas screen, right? Yep. Okay, good. So what I was referring to, and I just wanted to provide a quick lesson since we're going into subqueries now. Uh, in the assignment, and it's just the wording of the assignment and all that, so I, I'm gonna have to change that. Uh, so question number one, write a query that will return both the maximum and minimum average salary group by department from the, the employee table. What I wanted wanted you to do was to essentially, and you all got credit for it because it, the way the question is worded, there's this maximum and minimum salary uh, grouped by department. The whole idea was to group it and actually list the departments and the maximum and minimum salary for each department. Uh, that makes more sense as far as something applicable. Um, well, let me show the slide. But but that the way it's worded is a little confusing. So I just want to show you what what my, my solution is and what I did here. I'm going to change this question to section ten. Basically, it's a subquery. If you look at this, uh, select department ID, average max salary as. And basically, basically, I gave it a title. I use underscore, so it's one average max salary, and then average minimum salary, and then I used a sub. You're going to learn subqueries today. Then from and then I created a subquery, select department ID, uh, max salary as max salary. So we're basically using this 
this return from the subquery, the inner subquery, because when you, you'll learn when you create a subquery query, this will run first, right? And then the outer query will run second. So you, you have these values, which are basically your um, uh, max and min salary by department. So, and I just did group by, well, I did group by department. You all did that, so that's fine. I just ordered by department to make sure they're ordered. So when you run this, whoops, all right. You see that we have every department and all the max and minimum salary. So in department 10, there's only one employee. So the max and min are the same, but you see it does depict the maximum salary, the average maximum salary. It's, it's a very odd question. So I, I'm, I just wanted sh to tell you all that I need to reword that so it makes sense just to get a, a one number for, for the whole company really does is not useful. So, so that's what I did there. So no one got it wrong. So don't feel like you, 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 it was a mistake what you did. It's just the way that the question is worded very odd. All right. All right. So all that being said, let's move on uh, to our midterm. So once again, the midterm starts tomorrow morning. And basically, you have a very nice study guide that I just updated. Um, yeah. And I would download it and print it if you can, or download it on your phone, or whatever you need, uh, because each of the sections will be covered. I think I'm going to actually download it. There's a Word doc. It is a Word doc. Let's see if I can open it up here. And I do want to cover this because I did spend a lot of time making sure that everything you needed as far as the midterm is in here. So section one, um, relational database. If you, you have to go back and read through this. Um, but I what I did, I made sure that these bolded items are truly the ones that you will need to know. Primary key, foreign key, projection, selection, using select columns, using select rows. And if you go back into the lectures, these this material is covered. Column aliases, um, what is the command you would use to display a structure of a table? And that's described, DESC, -E you will need to know that. Um, once again, section two, uh, distinct, you know that, between and an, in, like, and is null, is not null. Section three, logical operators, uh, order by clause, ascending, descending, um, select this particular query, giving you an example, just know the order by and where and select, and the order of execution, how the, the, Query, the select query is read. It's, it's from where select what about? Yeah, that's pretty important because you'll be asked questions about that. And then section four, some of the functions, the character manipulation function, functions, concat, substring, length, et cetera. Uh, the number functions, the date functions, uh, make sure you're, you're pretty comfortable with that. And then the conversion function, the two char, two date, uh, we go through. We, I will. You will have to go through all of those uh, in in the midterm. Um, then the null, the NVL and NVL two and null if and core release knows what uh, you need to know what those do. What those do for you as far as handling nulls. Section six, the joins. Uh, I didn't bold anything because just about everything is covered uh, from joins. Primarily, the join, the inner join. Um, and why would you use a left or right? And what does that mean as far as joining tables? Section seven will not be included. Uh, section eight was the group functions, average count, max, min, sum, and the count and just count distinct. All of those are part of that. And then finally, section nine, the one section that we went through last week, you will need to know all of that, all of the, the setup. 
operators in union, union all intersect and minus. All right. So that, that's, like I said, I would definitely download that, print it out if you can, have that, at least make notes on it, uh, have it sitting, sitting to the side, because uh, that, that will definitely help you. All right, so once you, hopefully everyone has done the, the testing respondents lockdown browser, I'm gonna check in a minute or so, I'd have to look at the grades, I can't show you that. But the uh, test, I can I can preview it without uh, launching the respondents. Um, but I, as I told you, it has 50 questions, as you see there. Um, I will, we will just go over eh, maybe a couple questions. So select statements are used for what? Who wants to answer that? Retrieving data from a database. You all agree with that? All right. So that's pretty easy. All right. Question two. When you use a select clause to list one or two columns only from a table and no where clause, which SQL capability is used? And this one's a little different. You really need to look this up. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to give you the answer to that. Uh, protection only, protection and selection, joining only, selection. That one's kind of tricky. You really need to refer back to the lecture on that one. Yeah, that one's... It's, all right. In the de default order of precedence, which operator would be evaluated first? Divisions and... So this is just mathematical operations. So you... If you had it, you can kind of get an idea what the midterm is going to be about. So, uh, and for you math math nerds, you know that usually this division, it has to be multiplication and division. Uh, they're at the same level. So there you go. That's a preview of the midterm. I uh, don't want to give you more than that, but remember you have 50 questions like that. Um, and there's specific criteria. And remember that, yes, it opens tomorrow morning, but once you open the, the midterm, you must complete it in, in 90 minutes. Um, let's see. And I would suggest studying first, um, but don't, don't try and cram, I mean, most of the questions you can pro and you see with the navigation, I just showed you with the navigation, uh, and I'll just remind you of that. Let me go back down to it. Uh, depending on how, how comfortable you are, um, you know you can navigate to any to any of the questions. Um, but, but I'm pretty sure students can see the navigation pane on the on the, the right here. And basically I I would suggest going through and answering the questions that you know you can answer and then go, if you can't, or just going through them one at a time. If you can't answer it, go on to the next question uh, and then come back to it. You can do that as long as you don't close the quiz. So just remember that. So are there any general questions about the midterm? Just general questions. Okay, hearing none. Oh. All right, let me let Richard in. All right. All right, hearing none. I'm once again. We're going to go right into section ten, and, and this this section will have um, the assignment and quiz due Sunday, but uh, section ten is not a part of the, the midterm that you will go into tomorrow, okay? All right. So let's, I guess everyone's ready for the midterm, right? No questions, no concerns. You're like, bring it on. We can do it, right? <laughs> uh, I'll just say, you know, really pay attention 
to the questions. Uh, most of them are multiple choice, but uh, you know, test taking 101, please read the questions carefully and then please read the responses. You have time enough to do that. Um, and let's see, another suggestion, pretty much always go with your first inclination. Do not get, do not second guess yourself. You second guess yourself, you get, the statistics say, says that, or uh, dictates that about 90% of the time you will be wrong if you second guess. Although there's that 10%, so, but still, uh, it's probably better just to move on, answer and move on. All right. Uh, Adam says 90 minutes is enough time that most are going to, to be, yes. 90 minutes is enough time because most are multiple choice. Now, uh, I think a couple of the questions, I thought I had them at the beginning, but I guess I'm shuffling. We'll have you write a query, but it's a basic, I think, unless I took them out. Well, I'll review it. I should have reviewed it over the weekend, but I'm pretty sure most of the questions are multiple choice, but you will have to read the question carefully and read the answers. And once you submit the question, uh, and then once again, it's it's recorded. Um, yes. Oops. So anyway, take your time. You do have enough time. It seems like not enough time for 50 questions, but a minute and a half per question or whatever it is, is, is plenty of time. We all read faster than that. All right. All right, so we're going to go into subqueries. Uh, our, our objective is to find and explain the purpose of subqueries for retrieving data, uh, construct and execute a single role subquery, and distinguish between single role and multi role subqueries. Um, so, the purpose as a friend asked you to go to the movie, but before you could, could answer yes or no, you first had to check with your parents. Yeah, none of us checks with our parents, right? We just go to the movie. We're all, we're all grown up. So <laughs> we don't worry about check. Maybe you want to check with your wife or your significant other, but yeah, that's kind of outdated. So if someone asks you to, to answer you the answer to a math problem, but before you can give the answer, you had to do the problem yourself. So basically we're just, we're describing a, a scenario where it's dependent upon something happening before you actually can move forward with the scenario. That's basically what a subquery is. Uh, you write it in a way that, and we'll get into this, basically the answer to the, we'll call it the outer query is dependent upon the inner query. Uh, so throughout this course, we've written, I've had you write queries to extract data, well, select statements. What if you wanted to write a query only to find out that you didn't have all the information and that's, you know, welcome to, do is levels of programming. Uh, you, can, you can solve this problem uh, by nesting queries, placing one query inside the other. And so this is what we call a subquery. The subquery executes to find the information you don't know. So yeah, the outer query uses the information to find out what you need to know. Uh, basically, the best way to understand what a subquery does, um, and I would suggest this, I mean, you have an inner query and a nested scenario is always inner, 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 uh, but make sure you you know, you know what, the, what the result of the inner query is, because that will, well, the auto query will depend upon that result. And that's why you need a subquery. You, you're pulling a, a certain result that's expected to answer a question that's, that's signified by the auto query. So, all right. A subquery is a select statement that is embedded in a clause of another select statement. So a subquery executes once before the main query. Um, I know this, this narrative can be a query or a nested query and an out of query. I mean, that's the best way to remember it. And if you, you see here, the syntax for your inner query select is enclosed in parentheses. And that's usually the best way to distinguish that between what's going to happen in the outer query. So that, that syntax, just to give you a general overview, is how the 
how the query is situated. All right, there's some guidelines. One, the subquery, the inner query is enclosed in parentheses. Uh, the subquery is placed on the right side of the comparison condition, which means if there's a, if you have where some ID is equal to, then that's where your subquery would go. The outer or inner queries can get data from different tables. So yes, you yeah, you can pull data from you know any table or any scenario. Only one order by clause can be used for a select statement. If used, it must be the last clause in the outer query. Remember that. That one is kind of important because if you, you kind of mess that up, then the query doesn't run like you think. And the subquery or the inner query cannot have its own order by. The order by has to be in the outer query. Um, the only limit on the number of subqueries is the, is the buffer size of the query use. Well, that's true. With these systems now, you can have a nested, 10 queries nested. Is that is that something that's useful? Probably not. I can tell you that. I never use more than three. <laughs> After that, you're getting ridiculous, ridiculously convoluted and complicated. So yes, the, the, the buffer sizes on these systems are, are you know, um, well, it's it's high enough that you can have you know several you can have a hundred sub queries and it would still run. But do you need that? Well, I would say probably not. All right, the two two types of sub queries are single row sub query that uses single row operators. You know, the greater than, less than, equal, not equal, uh, and return only one row for the, from the inner query. That's called a single row. And then there's multi-row multi or multiple row subqueries that, that use multiple row operators like in, any, and all, and return more than one row from the inner query. And you'll see the difference uh, with that as we go through our lessons tonight. So what if you wanted to find out the names of the employees that were hired after Peter Vargas? So the first thing you, you need to know is the answer to the question, when was Peter Vargas hired? Blah, blah. Uh, once you know this hire date, then you can select those employees who are so, if you look at this example, well, the first thing that you would do, you know, in my mind, select hire date from employees where last name is Vargas, right? That would be your inner query. So that's going to return a date, right? We all know that's going to return one date. And then we use that in our auto query, select first name, last name, hire date from employees where hire date is greater than. All right, does that make sense to everyone? Can everyone follow the logic there? Uh, and what I suggest, you know, make sure that when you write the inner query or the subquery, well, one, it's going to return a result. And in these single row queries, it has to return one single value. If it returns more than one single value, then you, you'll get an error and all that. But this query, the outer query is expecting a date. So use your noggin, <laughs> think through it. If you're expecting a date and it returns a name, then it's probably going to give you oddball results or give you an error. So logically think through what the result of that inner query is. Because the, the best practice is that, you know, this auto query is dependent upon the result here. And always, always, always run that. You can highlight that inner query and run it, right? In the developer to make sure it returns a single result. Make sure you save yourself a ton of time if you do it that way. I like the inner query, run it, and then run the entire, you know, subquery uh, itself. All right. So if a subquery returns a null value or no rows, the auto query takes the results and use. So basically, um, so and you'll get a no data found as far as your or no no results. So. Protect yourself. Make sure, make sure that your inner query or your subquery uh, produces your expected result. Uh, all right. So that's basically an introduction to subquery. Uh, subquery is the title of a query that has, has a, a subquery. You have an inner inner query is a query that is ran first. The outer query is dependent upon the result of the inner query. We have two different types. Single role and multi role subquery. All right. Any questions about subqueries?
All right, let's dig into single rule subqueries a little bit here. All right, so our objectives, construct and execute a single rule subquery in the where clause of a having or having clause. All right, single rule, construct and execute a select statement using more than one subquery. Yeah, and you can do that. Construct and execute a select statement using a group function in the subquery. Ooh, it seems to be seems to be coming pretty complicated, but let's move ahead. As you as you probably realize, subqueries are a lot like internet search engines. Well, okay, I guess we can say that. I may have to remove that. They're not really like search engines anymore. But anyway, uh, they are great at locating the information needed to accomplish another task. Yeah. So in this lesson, you will learn how to create even more complicated tasks for subqueries to do for, yeah, just to do more for you. Uh, keep in mind subqueries save time and that you can accomplish two tasks in one statement. That's a very rudimentary way of saying it. So facts about a single rule subquery. They return one rule or one, you know, one result generally. Uh, you use single rule comparison operators equal, greater than, greater than, equal, little less than, all of those single rule operators. Uh, there, the, the subquery is enclosed in, in parentheses, you know, one of the guidelines, uh, and place the subquery on the right side, which means um, basically think of the right side as where you have a, a column name or some type of value is equal to, and then you have a sub, the subquery, the select subquery. So remember that, on the right side, on the wrong side will cause you issues for the left side. <laughs> All right. The outer and inner queries can get, uh, get data from different tables, uh, only one order by. So basically these guidelines we went, we've gone through before. Remember, remember, remember the order by must go in the outer query only. Um, so, and we talked about the buffer size, which is not a big issue anymore. But I can say in my day, yes, four or five subqueries, and you would be done. Um, all right, so we have two different tables. Check, take a look at this example. Uh, first of all, I'd like to review that the inner query select department ID from departments where department name is marketing. So that's just gonna return a department ID, right? And the department ID is going to be 20, and then select last name, job ID, department ID from employees where department ID is equal to so we're using two tables, the department table and the employee table. Uh, and so you can use a subquery to, you know, in our little uh, database to identify employees in a specific department and, and structure in a way that you have uh, the last name, job ID here, and department ID. So that's one of its usages that's, that's, that can be useful. All right. All right, more than one subquery can return information to the outer query. So we're going to have two, yeah, count them, two subqueries because we're using a, a an AND operator. So we're, we're both going to select a job ID from employees where employee ID is equal to 141. So we're looking for the, the specific employee. And we're selecting, um, so just reading the the, sub, the inner query, select department ID from departments where location ID is equal to 1500. And then our outer query, which is going to be dependent upon those inner queries, we want the last name, job ID, salary, department ID from employees where job ID is, you know, um, essentially associated with this employee. So basically we're looking for everyone that's that's a clerk. And then we're selecting the department ID from the departments where and we're, everyone that's in that department. So we're, we're going to return four individuals uh, that are ST clerks. Uh, what's an ST clerk? Um, store clerk uh, and their salary. And you know, they all should be in the same department. Uh, we're just looking at a location ID in the department. Yes, these these individuals all work together uh, in this department. 
I guess we want to know how much they're getting paid. Um, Raj, Davies, Matos, Armatos, and Vargas. But the whole concept here is you have in your where clause, you have you have a job ID and department ID, and know that information is being generated or connected to two other subqueries. Does that make sense to everyone? We can handle a two two inner query, one outer query. So if you get a chance, you know, well, we'll have a chance to run run other subqueries that seem a bit complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, All right. So one thing that you need to concern yourself with is group functions and subqueries. Uh, so group functions can be used. We just went through the group functions. The group function without a group by clause and the subquery returns a single row. The query on the next slide answers the question, which employees earn less than the average salary? So, and you see the subquery here, select last name, salary, well, select average salary from employees. So that's going to return a value, 8,775. Select last name salary from employees where salary is less than. So oh, there you go. It's going to return all the employees that have, an, that have a salary that's less than the average. Hopefully that's not a yearly salary. That would be pretty bad. <laughs> But so, and it's just in this case, it's you know you see here it's a group it's group by function, but you don't have you don't need to group by. That can get a little confusing. So, and you can use the having clause with silk Um Remember that the having clause is similar to the where clause, except the, the having clause is used for groups, and the where clause is used for for single functions. Because the having clause always includes a group function, the subquery will, will all or nearly always include a group function as well. Uh, generally, that's by default. Uh, to not to not create any complications, you do want to use the having clause with with the group function. All right. So, which departments have the lowest salary that is greater than the lowest salary in department fifty? Uh, so in this example, the lowest salary in department 50 is 2,500. So our query is select the minimum salary from employees, which is going to be this 2,500. I select department ID, minimum salary from employees, group by department ID, having min minimum salary greater than that 2,500. So now we know which departments have a lowest salary that is greater then the lowest, that's a wacky question. So, but if you needed to know that and your, your supervisor was curious about that, uh, tell him to run his own queries. <laughs> anyway, so scenario, scenario, scenarios. Remember that's always the case in, in running queries. Um, and basically, I mean, you can see that, remember with single row queries, subqueries, uh, you, you're expecting, even even in the group function, you're still expecting one value. And that one value is going to provide a comparison uh, for your outer query. Just remember that. And remember the subquery has to go on the right side of your operator. So if you do that, then these subqueries will make sense, especially the single row. Um, if you ever run into a no data found, you really have to extract your inner query and make sure it's returning a single value or single row. So, so we talked about a subquery with the where clause or having clause uh, using more than one subquery and then um, group functions in the subquery. Pretty straightforward. So the key, key terms, any questions about that? Makes sense, right? Not a big deal. Okay, let's move on to multi-role queries. These can be pretty interesting. Multi-role subqueries. So our objective is correctly use the comparison operators in any and all in multiple multi-role queries. Instruct and execute a multiple multiple role query in the where clause or having clause, kind of the same idea. 
as before described, what happens if a multi-row query subquery so returns a null value? You know, the database blows up or something. Understand when multiple multi-row query subquery so should be used and when it's safe to use a single row subquery. So yeah, there is a, a particular situation where you would want a multiple row query. And generally, in, in most cases, um, depending on what your scenario is, you know, I, I've done a lot of single row queries because it made sense uh, as far as subqueries. Distinguish between pairwise and non-pairwise subqueries, and I'll talk about that. Create a query using the exists and not exists operators to test for return rows from a subquery. And that's another way to test. <clears throat> um, generally, when I write subqueries, I, I know what I'm expecting from the inner query. So, and to not go into the exists, not exists as far as the operators, especially, well, unless you're working with a very complex, very large database. Uh, so, Subqueries are pretty much designed to find something or use something that you don't know to answer a question that you do know. Um, single row subqueries can return only one row. What if you need to find something based on several rows and several values? That's the whole idea of a multiple row subquery. And you're going to use the comparison operators in, you know, in a group, any and all. You know, we went through these, but I will distinguish. We'll, we will talk about distinguishing the differences. All right, so here's a question. Whose salary is equal to the salary? And some of these questions will be mind boggling, so prepare yourself. <laughs> uh, of an employee in department 20. So whose salary is equal to the salary of an employee in department 20? So this example returns an error because more than one employee exists in department 20, the subquery returns multiple roles. So if you try to run a single query here, yes, you'll get Single row subquery returns more than one row, and you'll get a headache because you're like, well, okay, now what do I do? Well, because you're using a an equal sign, um, basically you're confusing the system. Um, and yes, it's a very silly question. Anyway, that's what I say. So in any and all sub, um, and these these operators, basically, you can return multiple rows. And you'll see how that helps with the processing of something like that. So in the same query, the end operators use with, with the outer query, where clause to select only those rows which are in the list of values returned from the inner query. So select last name, hire date from employees, where extract year from hire date, and select extract year from hire date from employees where department ID is equal to 90. Uh, so this returns a group, right? And within that group, we're going to satisfy the requirements. Just like if you had in and you had a list of IDs or a list, you know, separated separated by a comma, because that's where that's how it would return uh, in the inner query. So if you're concerned, once again, always, always, always run the inner query first and see what the results are. And then make sure it makes sense to you because uh, we're using an end operator. So there should be a list of re results returned to work with. All right. So the inner query will return a list of years that employees in department 90 were hired, et cetera. So it'll return a list of years. So we're using the extract function just to extract a year, right? You all see that. Do you all remember that? You remember the extract function? Probably not. Who does not remember the extract function? <laughs> anyway, yes, it'll return a list of years. So we know uh, that that result will answer the question about um, whatever the initial question was about department ID. Um, all right, the any operators used when we want the outer query where clause to select the rows which match the criteria. Um, basically, like less than greater than or equal, or at least one value in a subquery result set. So this example will return any employee whose year hired is less than a, at least one year hired of employees of department ninety. So basically, it's just looking for one, you know, one 
employee that matches the years. So you see here our inner query inner query will return 87, 89, and 93. So we want um, result of the auto query to be less than uh, what's at least one value to be less than um, at least one year higher of it. So at least one year higher, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so 87, 89, 87, 90, 91 are at least one year from either any of those. And that's why it returns that many results. 87 is right on, 89 is right on, 87 is right on, 90 is one year away, 91 is actually two years away, but. All right, you'll have to figure that out yourselves, give <laughs> yourselves a headache, but depending on what we're trying to accomplish there. Um, yeah, I need to really dissect that, that query. Now the all, the all operator is used when you want the outer query where clause is select the rows which match the criteria of all the values. Well, that's right. So this is any of the values. This is all the values. So basically, because we're we're running the same query and using the all uh, with 87, 89, and 93, no employees will match all of those values. And that's why our result is no data. And no no data found is not an error. This means that your the result of your outer query based on your inner query doesn't find anything. So don't panic if you see that. And besides, you can tell your boss, well, I didn't find any data and the question was not really smart. <laughs> All right. Null values. Null values, as with any scenario, null values can provide a problem with data retrieval, which is why you want to handle null values in one way or another. And we know several ways to do that. So suppose that one of the values returned by a multiple row query is null, but our, but other values are not. So if, if n or any are used, the outer query will return rows which match the non-null values only. Remember that, all right? If n or any, uh, but, all is used, yeah. Whenever you have null return, uh, just remember that. And if you're using an all comparison, no matter what you're trying to accomplish, it will return no data found because nothing matches null. Null doesn't even really match null, but uh, remember that in comparison in SQL. Uh, so that's a criteria that's not cannot be satisfied with any type of comparison. Remember that, All right? Group by and having, as you might suspect, the group by clause and the having clause can also be used with multiple role. Uh, what if you wanted to find the departments whose minimum salary is less than the salary of any employee, I hate these questions, who works in department 10 or 20. Um, so this is what we're looking at as far as our result. Now, how would we construct a query? Uh, we need to multiple row subquery, which returns the salaries of employees in departments 10 and 20. The outer query will use a group function, min. So we need to group the outer query by department ID. This is making it very complicated, but take a look at this example and make sure you understand the results. First, the results of the subquery or inner query, and then the results of the, the, the outer query itself. So select salary from employees where department ID is in 10 or 20, that's your departments. And remember the order by is a part of the outer query. Make sure you understand that. The inner query is always surrounded by parentheses. So we're having having men's salary greater than any of the returns of the, the inner query. All right. Does that query make sense to everyone? Make sure you can grasp what's happening here and how you can see these results. Uh, once again, as, as we go through this section, uh, well, you're probably gonna forget about it until, you, until after you've taken the midterm, but please definitely go back to those practices 
And because all they're all these are all illustrated in the practices. So you can run the queries in the developer and see how they work, see how it works. Uh, Subqueries can use one or more columns. If they use more than one column, they are called multiple column subqueries. Now we're getting at multiple column subqueries. It, it really depends upon what you're trying to accomplish with your result. Uh, so multiple, multiple column subquery can be either pairwise, uh, pairwise a comparison or non-pairwise comparison. You're probably saying, what the heck does that mean? Uh, so the example below shows a multiple column pairwise subquery with the subquery highlighted in red and the results in the table. The query lists the employees whose managers and departments are the same as the manager and department of employees in 149 or 174. Um, so, and then there's non-pairwise and all pairwise means that there's a direct correlation between the columns that you're using. So you employee ID to employee ID, manager ID to manager ID and so on. A non-pairwise multiple column so query also uses more than one column, but it compares them one at a time. So the comparison takes place in different subqueries. Um, I've never used um, or never had to use a pairwise or non-pairwise or even a multiple column subquery. Uh, of course, you know, I would avoid these because they they become a little confusing. But if you read through this query, make sure you read through the red ones first to understand what the results are. Um, and then the outer query, select employee ID, manager ID, department ID from employees where manager ID is this and department ID is this and employee ID is not in. So it's going to compare these one at a time and uh, while you're squinting at that saying, why would I even run that? Uh, just know that that functionality is useful depending upon what you're trying to accomplish. So you need to write one subquery per column. You want to compare against one when performing non pairwise one. Yeah, one subquery per column. And this is where it can get a little confusing with the non-pairwise because you need to compare them one at a time. Whereas pairwise, you compare and you can compare them. Uh, let's go back to that. Uh, see, this is pairwise. Manager ID, department ID, manager ID, department ID. That's pairwise. Non-pairwise, you're comparing the departments one at the column, excuse me, excuse me, one at a time. So whatever your scenario is, um, once again, as you see, this can become pretty complicated. Manager ID, department ID, manager ID, department ID. That is non-pairwise. Any questions about that? It, it's best to practice that so you can see the difference between pairwise and non-pairwise. Um, now, once again, have I ran queries like this in, in you know, in a real, real life scenario, no. Uh, is it, I don't know. It, it becomes a little complicated, even for a simple database to to run those pairwise, non-pairwise uh, queries. But it is a good thing to learn, so I'm not going to discount it. All right? Do you have exists and not exists in subqueries? Exists and its opposite are are two clauses that can be used when testing for matching matches in the subquery. Is it, if exists test for a true, yeah, if exists test for a true or matching result, exists test for a true or matching result in the subquery. To answer the question, which employees are not managers, you first have to ask who are managers? Yeah. And then ask who does not exist on the managers list. That to me is just so convoluted. I mean, why would you ask who's not managers if you want to find out who are managers? That's probably anyway. That's what that's how the exists not not exists works. <laughs> so as far as the syntax, see here, select last name as not not a should be it should be not a manager uh, from employees. That's a little mixed up here. And okay. um, select last name as not a manager from employees, and we're aliasing the employees AMP where not exists, and then we're basically we're saying, here's a list of non-managers. 
So everyone else um, is a manager. Or in this case, are not not a manager. We we'll return these names and these names to start um, because we're saying they don't exist um, in this select star from employees managers where manager ID. So basically, these are all the managers <laughs> in your sub crew. There's definitely an easier way to do this. So uh, you probably would not want to select all the managers, um, wait, select all the non-managers based on who's not in the manager list. All right, who can explain that better than I have? <laughs> but anyway, not exist basically will give you a, a list um, of your results that's not a part of the subquery. That's the whole idea. So these are all the managers. So everyone else that's returned as not a manager. Yeah. That's that's a mouthful. Um, if the same query is executed with a not in instead of a not exist, the result is very different. That is true. Um, the not exist will help you to differentiate between if you had this type of scenario, which, to to be honest, you you can just select from the employee um, employees table where the manager ID is not null, and get your managers, but this is another way to do that if you wanted to use sub queries. So it's basically a true, not true scenario. Um, and yes, if you ran it this way as a sub query, it will give you no data found because it doesn't differentiate. Um, so not in, in this scenario, it does not react the same as not exist. All right. The cause of the stream result is not to the null value. Well, basically, the way that not exists and not in works is very different than Oracle. Uh, it's just evaluated differently, which is why these particular uh, clauses were created. Um, I guess in, in a large database scenario, it would make a big difference if you're able to eliminate, um, once again, you're eliminating items on, based on something that you, you know if you don't know who all the managers are, if you don't have a manager manager's ID, et cetera, you could uh, you can make your your query your result table discovery a little bit easier. Uh, as with any other scenario, you have to be aware of nulls, uh, especially in in the in or not in. If you're unsure whether or not some query will include a null value, yeah, either eliminate the nulls by using. Once again, you want to handle the nulls if you if. You, if there's a case where you're dealing with nulls, the first thing you want to do is handle the nulls before you run any type of, of operation on re retrieving that data, especially using subqueries. All right. One last point about subqueries. Some subqueries may return a single row or multiple row, depending on the data values in a row, obviously. If even the slightest possibility exists of returning a multiple row, make sure you write a multiple row query. So that's... So that's another reason to check to check your your inner query, your subquery. Just run it to see what the results are. If it's a single role, then it's a single subquery. If it's not, then you you will have a problem. So make sure because if you're if it's returning multiple roles, you'll get an error and you'll have to start over. But that is one key point. Uh, and I've always solved I've always solved that or mitigated that with just making sure that I'm looking at the expected results from, from the subquery. All right. Yeah. All right. So what we talked about in this topic, exists and not exist. Once again, you run those those examples. It'll help you understand those particular clauses and what non-pairwise and, and pairwise is as far as the comparison of columns, if you're running a multiple column subquery. Um, okay. All right. So, and yes, I know that a lot of this will go, and then you'll, you'll review it after the midterm. Uh, just make sure you review it before you tackle the assignment and quiz. Uh, 
before Sunday. Um, I know this is, well, once again, I would say the best thing to do is if you're ready to take the midterm, just take it right away, get it out of the way. And then your week is back to normal, right? You don't have to worry about it. Just do your regular procrastination <laughs> or whatever and finish the assignments, you know, on time before Sunday. So that's my suggestion. Is it a good one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lam asked, yes, we're still, we still have to stay on schedule. So lesson 10 is still due Sunday night. Um, I, I would tell you that, I mean, you have plenty of time to do the quiz. Hopefully none of you will wait until Friday at 10. And you, then you're, well, maybe you have to because you work or whatever. Uh, that's when you have enough a block of time. But you still have enough time if you do if you take the midterm Friday, take a breath, uh, review the lecture material, and then <clears throat> or and do all the practices and then take care of the section 10 assignment by Sunday. But it is, yes, it is still due on Sunday. Now, do I think that's too much for you all? Well, who's gonna say that that's too much? Anyone gonna complain? Okay, okay. All right. No, it's hearing no complaints. I'm going to move right ahead. Oh, wait, someone chimed in on the chat. Deal, deal says we got it. Yeah, you guys are all good students, no problem. All right, our last topic in subqueries are correlated subqueries, uh, kind of a double entendre. Identify when correlated subqueries are needed, construct and execute correlated subqueries, construct, execute name subqueries using the with clause, yeah. So sometimes you have to answer more than one question in, in one sentence. Uh, your friend might ask you, you know, do you have enough money for cinnamon ticket, popcorn, and a drink? Uh, whoever asks questions like that, well, yeah. before you can answer your friend, you need to know the prices of the ticket, the, the popcorn, and the drink. You also need to see how much money you have in your pocket. Yeah, I have no money. You'll have to pay me. Well, let's hope not. All right, so actually what seemed like an easy question turns into four questions that you need to answer before you, you can say yes or no. <laughs> That's quite a scenario. So in business, you might get asked uh, to produce a report of all employees earning more than the average salary for, you know, they're really stuck on these salaries. You know, the yearly sal salaries are so low anyway, so, uh, well, this is hope they're not yearly. So here, uh, you first have to calculate the average salary per department, then compare the salary for each employee to the average salary and so on. So the Oracle server performs a correlated subquery when the subquery reference, references a column from a table referred to in the parent statement or the outer statement. Um, so if you can follow this, get candidate role from outer query, execute inner query using candidate role value, Use values from inquiry to qualify or disqualified candidate rule. And you just keep doing that. So essentially, this is a description of a correlated or connected or you know, several layers depending upon others. Um, so a correlated subquery is evaluated once for each rule processed by the parent. And our, we, we call it the parent statement. Um, and then continues. The parent statement can be a select, so it can be any of the, the clauses that we'll just focus on select since we're primarily doing select. We will do some of the others later. Um, candidate role from the outer query, inner query, using candidate role value, et cetera, and so on. All right, so let's take a look at this correlated subquery here, um, answering the questions whose salary is higher than the average salary of their department. To answer that question, we need to write a correlate. Uh, so select and always just your alias of one of your tables, which is employees, old first name, old last name, old salary for employees where old salary is greater than select average I salary from employees I where I department ID is equal to O department ID. So basically everyone in the department, you're gonna look at the average salary and see who is who has higher than the average salary, right? So you're correlating, you're gonna go each, each employee in that department, right? You're gonna compare, the, keep going, 
That is what a correlated cell query does. It's kind of like a single role ran over and over and over until all the rules have been satisfied in the where clause. Remember this where clause is identifying a specific department. All right, does that make sense to everyone? Oh, it's a little bit different than just your regular subquery. All right. I think I got an affirmative. Yes. All right. So the correlated cell query hardware excuse once reached will consider by the hour. Yeah, I just said that. All right. The with clause. All right. So this is another clause that you need to consider. If you have to write a very complex query with joins and aggregation used many times, you can write the different parts of the statement as query blocks and then use those same query blocks in a select statement. What? So Oracle allows you to write name subqueries in one single statement, as long as you start your statement with the keyword with. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. The with clause retrieves the results of one or more query blocks and stores those results for the user who runs the query. So take a look at the syntax here. The with clause improves performance, makes the, the query easier to read. And the syntax for the with clause looks like this. With, just write away your subquery as, and then you give it a name, um, and so on, select column list. And basically, and it'll make sense once you see an example. Uh, write the query for the following requirements. Display a list of employees' last names that are not managers. All right, we had this before in a different kind of query. So to construct this query, you first need to get a list of manager IDs from an employee table, right? We can create a name query using the with clause to retrieve manager IDs from the employee table. So we go this way, with manager as, that's our, our naming our subquery, select distinct manager ID from employee. So we're just getting all the manager IDs, right? And we're saying, so with managers, that's the name uh, of our subquery. So select name as not managers for employees where employee ID is not in, and select star for managers. So just selecting star from here, a name, basically they're not in here, so they're not managers. So there you go. We're saving that and we can use that here in our select clause, as long as we put the, the keyword with. Um, okay. It came from here. Does everyone see that? So we, we turned a very confusing query that we really didn't want to know about exists and not exists, something very straightforward where we're just pulling in all the, the individuals that are not managers. So that's the with clause. With clause is useful because you can use that when we're, whenever your session is live. So in this topic, we identify correlated cell queries, which remember correlated, it just runs until the, the requirements placed in it by the where the having are completed, one row or one record at a time. Uh, and we executed, and please, if you're questioning about these, make sure you run these queries. These can be a little confusing to, to talk about, but it makes more sense when you're running them in the developer. And then the with clause. With clause can actually be pretty useful. I used to use it quite a lot. All right, so there you go. It seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It's just subqueries. Um, there's a lot of repetitive repetitiveness in this. So don't feel like those four topic sec four topics of the section is a lot more than normal. It really isn't. Uh, so once again, we have a ton of demos. This this is your best friend to uh, quickly understand what I've been rambling about as far as subqueries. Subqueries are useful. Um, it's the one thing that that I well, there's two things that I. I liked about SQL is the joins, multiple tables, and then subqueries. And you can do a lot with just those two aspects of SQL. All right, so go to the demos.
And then there, there are some good videos in here, um, single role, especially if, you, if you're if you a little confused still about single role, multi-role role. These two videos are actually very good. And then any and all operators, uh, this guy's very comical, but he will get you past, you know, understanding what those operators do, especially in subqueries. And then there's a kind of a, a little section, a, a couple of sections, actually more than I that I've added recently, that will highlight, give you a, a pictorial and explanation about what the what these operators do will do when uh, and please you know scan through these because they will make sense. So there's all, there's any, and then there's exists. Yeah, this one I had to go through myself kind of like, wait, why do I need this? But as far as subqueries using this exists, uh, it going through these pictorials will, will probably make a little more sense than trying to figure out how the subqueries work. So scan through these, uh, run the queries if you have to, and you'll see how the, the exists not the exists the exists operator and then and the not exists operators work. And then I threw in some advanced queries because I, I had one student that asked me, uh, he just, well, basically he did these himself mostly, but they're just a little bit more advanced um, than, the, than the basic ones in the demos. So you can once again, see how these subqueries work, cor correlated subqueries, uh, walk, walk through these, make sure you can run them. It will help you. There's tons of resources in here to help you really understand what subqueries you do. Um, and then I have a subqueries, because correlated subqueries was very confusing and it probably is for you all, uh, but there's additional resources. Hopefully you don't get all the pop-ups um, that you can navigate through that will help you understand those particular aspects. All right, so there's enough resources to bore you to tears, but they will definitely be helpful. And then you, then you have tons of practice um, as normal, four sections of practice and the solutions. And then do on Sunday, you have an assignment, uh, pretty straightforward, has all the normal things in as far as the subqueries. And then you have a quiz. I know it's a lot of work this week, but don't don't panic. It's it's not as bad as you think. Uh, and I'll have correlated anyway. So just just hang in there. You'll be fine. Um, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing, and say that a uh, uh, couple of reminders. Uh, you have the midterm. Once again, it uh, it opens tomorrow morning. It will, it will remain open as far as your access to it until Friday at midnight. Once you open the quiz and start it in the Respondents Lockdown Browser, you can't navigate away from it uh, within your system. It, if you do, then it locks, you know, basically it closes, and that's then you get a zero, basically. So once you open it, please don't navigate away from, navigate away from it. You can have any kind of notes. I, I know that some of you are savvy enough. Yeah, go, go to the library and use the library system as a, <laughs> you have your laptop and library system and you can do it. So anyway, well, there's no restriction on what you can do outside of the, the, um, the actual response lockdown browser. Just make sure I mean, in, in the description, it says you can only have one sheet of notes. No one's going to be proctoring uh, your your midterm exam. We we trust we trust students. They do all the right things, right? Right, Mo? All the right things. So remember, the midterm is tomorrow to Friday. And then Section 10 is still due, the assignment and quiz on Tuesday. Uh, I suggest not worrying about anything in Section 10 until after you because you'll be confused after you complete the midterm then, which which uh, kind of mo should motivate you to get good. Everyone said that they're ready. So as soon you're going to be sitting there waiting for 8 a.m. And as soon as 8 a.m. click out right into the, I know you're all going to do that, right? Right into the midterm, get it out of the way. Phew. 
and then onto my regular wheat. So midterm, and it is self-graded and all that. So I get to review it and make sure, I, and I do review all of them. And that reminds me, if you have any questions about the questions, because I, I, I did a lot of changes, well, not a lot, a few changes this semester to make sure the questions are a little bit more uh, comprehensive. So if you have any questions about the questions, please let me know. Uh, and you, if you want to challenge any of the questions based on the verbiage, I, I, I would like to hear that as well, because, you know, I, I took I took this class on about four years ago, and I, I've changed it quite a bit uh, to, try, to help you, you know, to help you all get through it, and it makes sense. So, yeah, and I'm very, very interested as to your interpretation of the midterm. So please do that for me. All right. Any parting questions from anyone? I just wanted to ask, uh, if you run out of time, does it just submit with a zero or does it like save whatever you answered and then submit it? Yeah, it, make sure you submit because you, you have the opportunity to submit each question. If you don't submit each question, then it, yes, you get a zero. So if you if you submit each question and you run out of time, then it takes your all of your submitted questions and okay. your score. Yeah, I probably won't run out of time. But I just wanted to know, <laughs> just in case. You're not going to run out of time, Adam. Uh, Ninety minutes is is much longer than you think for fifty questions. All right, thank yeah. you. I have a question too about the midterm. Yes. So, are we able to go back to the questions we've already answered? Yeah, I Okay, after you submit them, no. Oh, oh, no, like during the midterms, like are you able to go back to, like if you had doubts about a question before, previously? Now, as I said, you know, you can do that as long as you have not submitted the question. Does that make sense? All right, yeah. let, let me show you what I mean. Maybe I can illustrate this a little clearer. That's a good question, though, because where's the term? All right. All right. When you start it, um, you'll see that it, it will present one question at a time. Where's my? like this. Now, okay, I, let me correct myself because I know that we changed this. So as long as you answer the question, right, and hit next. So you can go back to that question at any time until you submit the quiz. Once you submit the quiz and it's your scores, it's closed and you're done. And you can skip to questions or whatever using the navigation on the right here. But yes, let me correct myself. And you can go back and change answers. But remember, yeah, at that, if you do that a lot, then the 90 minutes will go quick. Um, but yes, to answer your question, yes, you can go back, um, back and forth in all the questions until you submit the quiz. Make sure you submit the quiz because if you run out of time and it will not auto submit, now then, yeah, it'll just close and you'll get a zero, unfortunately. So once you go through all the questions, that's why I'm saying that, you know, go through the questions. Of course, you don't know. I don't, I don't think I randomize. Um, answer the ones that you can answer right away and then make a note of the ones that you weren't able to answer right away and then go back to them. Uh, that's the fastest way to get through Okay, and you can always change your answers until the quiz is submitted. Okay, does that make sense, Lem? Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? We're all good. Am I going to see that everyone takes takes the midterm and tomorrow and Wednesday and not waiting until Friday at ten? No. Oh, okay. Because I can check on that. I'll send you a warning. You're under warning. You haven't taken the midterm yet. All right. Okay. 
All right. Kobe says he's going to get an A. I can I can believe him. Um, I'll just I'll just warn you. I'll 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 part with this warning. Um, if you don't read the questions carefully and you don't read all the responses, you're not going to do well. I will just say that. So take the time to read the questions and don't second guess yourself. <laughs> That's, I'll say that again. If you feel like you're confident that you've chosen the right answer, go on. And if you have enough time, go back. But if you spend a lot of time overthinking, it, it'll be 89 minutes and you'll have 10 questions left. <laughs> you won't have enough time. Then you're just guessing. <laughs> All right. So it's not hard, but make sure you understand those particular bolded items on the study guide and use the study guide, make notes, run queries, whatever you need. All right. I know you're all going to do well, right? Right, right, Adam? Are you smiling yeah. or frowning? I'm ready. <laughs> Are you ready? Right, Mo, thumbs up? All right. Okay. So, and if you have any questions, just send me a message or an email. I will respond, but I'm not going to give you any more answers. <laughs> That's that's the whole idea is not to give you the answers, right? <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Good luck in the midterm. And remember, Section 10 is due this week as well. So take care <clears throat> and have a good evening. Thank you. See you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.